What's up guys, Karagos from Tempestock here, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video where we are talking about bases and discs, how we pick them, why we pick them and sort of the rules and considerations that I take into account when I'm picking the bases and the discs. Now for me, bases and discs can either make or break an art project or make or break a team. Um, there's sort of different rules and calibrations and considerations that we take into account whether we're working on artwork or teams and I'm going to try and explain that to you in this video. Hopefully you're going to find it interesting, hopefully for those guys that paint their own teams etc it might give you guys an insight and some little help and tips into how you pick your base combinations. If not, I hope it's just an interesting video. So let's get on it. First thing to take into consideration here then is what is a base and what is a disc. Up the top here we have bases. These are the bottom, the bit that contacts the pitch, the bowl that the, the figure sits in if you like. And the disc down at the bottom here is the inner, the bit that the player slots into. Now I use Santiago replica heavyweight bases and discs. There are a whole lot of other choices out there. There are one piece bases which basically eradicates the need for discs. They are a solid one piece of one colour. There are a load of professional bases that are like a million different colours and you can get base stickers and base, you know, all sorts of different bases and this. But for this, keeping it simple and for what I do here, this is what we use. So we've got our Santiago bases here and our discs here. And you can see just from the tiny little selection that we've got here, there are a lot of colour combinations you can go for. And the one that you pick, very, very important. <music> So underneath me on the screen now, what we have got are three teams from our own personal collection that we have painted fairly recently. We've got Juventus over here, a Real Betis in the middle, and a Leicester City on this side. You can see from these, the most important thing when painting teams is to match your bases to your kits. On frames, that is still a massive consideration, but there's a lot more flexibility that I would allow myself because I'm looking for different things in a frame than I am in a team. For team painting, for me, 100%, it's all about matching that base and that disc to the kit that I am painting. So for example, Juventus over here. Juventus's kit, black and white. So the bases had to be black bases, white discs, or what we have picked here is the white base with the black disc. And the reason I have chosen that is because the majority of this kit is white. For me, a Juventus has to have white shorts. There are examples throughout their history of using black shorts, but for me personally, a quintessential Juventus is all about having white shorts. So that's what they've got. The other key detail of this kit is that little white pinstripe that sits in between that black central stripe. Remember, when you are playing Sabutio, and it's something you should always take into account, is that 98% of what you see when you're playing with this team is the top. It's the bases and the discs. What am I trying to bring out? 2% of what I'm seeing is the kit from above. Don't get me wrong, I want them to look great when I'm looking at them at eye level, in the box, or at sort of three quarters, 45 degree angles, I want them to look great. But first and foremost, how do they look when I'm playing with them? I'm looking down them. Massive, massive consideration. So with this one, I had two choices I felt, black and white, white and black. I went with white and black because this kit is majority white. What I want to do is highlight that black to try and bring that out a little bit more by making that black stripe pop what I'm doing then is popping that white pinstripe. When you look down on these guys with that black disc there, that white pinstripe pops out and it's a key detail of this kit, which isn't lost. If there was a white disc in there, all the white sort of just merges into it and you do lose a little bit of that clarity. The middle kit, the classic, one of my favorite kits of modern times, the Rail Better to Wake kit from 2019. First and foremost, we've got to thank Mark Parker here for creating a lime green disc because it's made this kit go from being what could have been a good team to, in my opinion, being a great team. This base combination is picked based on, again, what it looks like from looking down from above. When you look down on this team, if we had a double dark green or a reverse base to what we've got now, which was an option, we could have gone with a lime green base and a dark green disc. But when you look down on this team, that base colour of this team is dark green. If you put that on a dark green base, you're going to lose that crispness and that clarity and colour that you'll see in from the top. So when we look down on this team now, what we see is that dark green shirt really standing out against that vibrant lime green base. 
when you look at this from 45 degree or in the box, this shirt has got about three, four, five even different shades of greens and whites into black. There's a lot going on in that shirt in terms of colours. By using that light colour against the dark, we're hoping to pop those colours out. And for me personally, I think it works. The other big advantage to this kit, and again, maybe with, with the eventless, is the white bar. The white tone in this Betis kit is brought out by that white bar. Now, I painted this kit with the full colour badge rather than the gold monochrome, which is on the actual shirt, because I wanted to stand out, and that white bar makes that badge pop out because you get the white and you get the white and it draws it and pops it. The final one over here then, the Leicester City, is on the gold base and the blue disc. Traditional Leicester City, white and blue. Since King Power's come in, we sort of introduced gold into our colour scheme and for me personally I think it works. I think what they've tried to do is create their own sort of colour identity within the top flight. Obviously there's teams like Everton and Chelsea who are blue and white. By bringing that gold in we're not abandoning our tradition but we're trying to forge a new sort of line. So this kit was all blue with the gold detailing pieces. So usually what I would do if the kit is all blue is I would never put it on a gold disc. In this case though, the detail on them shoulders is in gold. It's quite a big bit of detail. If I have gold disced it, you'd have lost that a little bit and personally I don't feel the aesthetic would have worked as well and I wanted that main gold to really pop when I'm looking down on these from above and when you look at these from my level it also works too. So to sort of summarise then what you're looking for when you're painting teams is does my base and disc combination match? What colours, what details am I trying to make pop from this kit? Does it match it? Does it look good from above as well as from my level? If you can take all them things into account, you're going to pick the right base combination. Okay then, so when we're picking the bases and the discs for our art stuff, the considerations and parameters are slightly different from when we're picking teams. With the Westwood Table Soccer Club stuff, it's more the same parameters as with team painting. We want them to match the base and the disc because there's only going to be one Werder Bremen in that collection. We don't have to worry about there being 19 others that are potentially using the same colours. With the artwork then, as you can see from this image now, from a distance, you cannot see any detailing on that kit. So what we want to do from a distance is try and bring you in, bring you towards it. The way that we do that is by the bases. The bases are extremely important when it comes to one of these artworks because that's what your first thing you're going to see. When you're eye level with this piece, as you guys are now, you cannot see very much of the discs. So that's why we do that. We look for using different bases and using slightly different colors and substitution colors of bases to try and show you that every single inch on this frame has got something different, something exciting, some food for your eyes to look at. From a distance, if everything's the same color as it would be with a team, it looks very bland, it doesn't stand out. So it's about making it stand out, it's about making it an eye catcher, but also it's got to look good when you get close to it. Okay, so if we get closer to this frame now, what you're going to start seeing is the kit start to come out and how those colours that we've chosen will complement it. In this frame, it's a Torino. And you can see here already, there are so many different base and disc combinations chosen. Your primary base choices with these would be your Claret, Maroon or Granata, as it's called with this team. White and black, probably. You're not really, if you were painting any of these as teams, with the exception of the away kits, obviously, in which we've used blue and sky blue. If you were doing these as teams, you probably wouldn't use a brown. You probably wouldn't use a gold. But we've used it as a colour sub to try and draw you in. 
The other reason why we use particular colours, specifically gold, is to celebrate something. So if a team's had a success or a fairly successful season or they've won a trophy or it's a great team of that, of that team, if that makes sense, a great squad, we tend to use gold to highlight that, to highlight a success. And it's a great one to use. It can be used in pretty much any team's frame. We do sometimes use it as a colour sub for yellow and orange as well in frames like those. So on a whole city frame, which we'll throw up now, we have used gold as a colour sub and not necessarily to celebrate a particular achievement. With this Torino frame as well, there was something really, really important about Torino. Obviously, they lost their entire squad in the late 1940s um, in the tragic air disaster. Within this frame, we have got the all gold base okay now we've shown you we've got all three of those guys on the screen now so we've got the all gold base the first team to win the Coppa Italia and Scudetto in the same season the team at their height the team at their peak the greatest Torino team that ever lived the next kit along then as you can see is on the all black that is taken from the final kit that these guys wore in that friendly in Lisbon with Benfica the next kit in here is in the all white. It's the River Plate inspired away kit, which was all to do with a sort of relationship bond that they built after the air disaster. We chose these three colors all to represent a different stage in Torino's history and about their story. The greatest achievements, the all gold, the tragedy in black and the mourning and the sorrow and the respect that I'm trying to pay to those players who were at the top of their game and the world at their feet, who were tragically taken from us, and then the all-white, the rebirth, the signifying of the rising back of Torino. They could, you know, they didn't disappear. They rose, and they're back again now. And that kind of why we've picked that all-white base. Now, again, it matches the kit, but it wouldn't have mattered what kit came next in this frame. I would have chosen the all-white because I wanted to symbolise that journey through those bases. The other colour that we use in this frame a little bit is brown. Now brown is a nice substitute colour for claret. It gives a slightly different shade. It can be used in so many different ways. We've used it as an inner disc here and as a base. And whilst it's not completely different and standout-ish, it's enough of a difference that when you get close to it, you don't notice that there's going to be any particular issue with it being brown as opposed to being claret. Within our frames, there are a couple of things we also consider with pretty much everything. We do not like, I say we, it's me, I do not like any vertical and horizontal figures with the same basis. So nothing on a vertical axis and nothing on a horizontal axis will ever match the base and this combination of the one that goes next to it. On a recent Leeds one, there's a few diagonals that match and there is one horizontal which almost matches as a navy and a yellow and a blue and a yellow. The reason we chose those colours is to highlight certain areas of the kit. Going back to what we said about our teams, we try and highlight different areas of different parts of kits. We want different colours to pop. With the artwork side of things, that's a lot more important than it is on the team stuff, again, which is why we choose different base combinations and different things. There's one of the players in this Torino frame who's wearing an all claret or all granata kit and we put him on an all claret base if i was to paint that as a team i probably wouldn't do that because as i said when you look down on these players that all claret on the all claret can get lost at eye level it looks great and in a frame it looks great for me personally i probably wouldn't choose it to put on a pitch to play with like that because i feel like you lose too much detail could you of course you could there's nothing to say you couldn't it just might not be something that i would do Every single base and disc combination we choose within a frame has to fit within these parameters. So when you see, sometimes when we put on Twitter and on Instagram, etc., when we put these pictures up of us in progress, you'll see those sheets written down with the bases and the discs written down. That is all pre-planned. So before I've even got the base and disc here, I've pre-planned what's going to go where and how it's going to work. There are occasions when those things turn up that we change our minds. But nine times out of 10, we stick with it. We may make slight tweaks. For example, with the whole one this time, we had a lot more yellow at the early stages of the frame and then it changed to orange. But actually, when it came to painting those kits and looking at the colors, the orange stuff looked better at the top and the yellowy tones that we chose 
lower down to match up with that yellowy ambery tone that they put on that kit. We mentioned earlier on that we try and make certain colours pop, so using those yellows on those amber yellow tones of the whole kit, as you're going to see here, really bring out the yellow tone on those shirts rather than the orangier tone, which is what we're trying to do. It's all about what part of that kit are you trying to bring out. I mentioned earlier on that Leeds United frame, and as you can see here, it's on screen, we've shown you those two figures that have the blue base and the yellow disc and the navy base and the yellow disc. The reason we chose navy for this one is because it has black shorts and by using the black shorts we're trying to make that colour pop out a little bit and those sleeves automatically brighten up because they're against that darker blue base. That's the end of this video there guys, that is bases and discs and how we pick them here at Westwood Table Soccer. The basis of the whole thing is there's two different ways of coming at it and hopefully the video that you've just seen has given the guys that paint their own teams potentially some guidance if they're sort of struggling with stuff to pick or whether they just want to think about things in a slightly different way hopefully this video might have done that to open your eyes a little bit to different things that you might consider when painting a team i.e what colors are you trying to bring out are you trying to highlight certain features do you want to not lose certain features by choosing specific base combinations with the artwork side of things it's completely different in a way but still follows the same parameters it just probably runs parallel to that team base selection parameter that we use in a frame, it's all about trying to draw you in from a distance. As you saw in that video, that photo I took was less than, probably less than a metre and a half away from the frame itself. And the details don't show up from there. You can't really see them. You can't see that detail in those subtle changes within the kits. So if you're walking, if you're social distancing from that frame and you're two metres away, if everything looks the same, it's boring. It's not going to draw you in. I know, and you guys know, when you get close to it, that's where the details start to come out. But when you're at a distance, what I'm trying to do is draw you in. By having that variance with each base, with each being a different colour, I'm trying to draw you towards that frame so that then you get the real hit. When you get there, you see the details that we put in. Every inch of a frame has something different going on in it. From a distance, I want you to see that as well so that you get encouraged to come and look at it and get close to it. Because when you get close to one of these frames, that's when the money shot is. That's when the real joy starts coming up. That's where the real food for your eye starts coming through and you can really start to appreciate what I've done and what we're trying to create for your club. That is it. That is the end of this video, guys. This is the first one we are editing on our brand new video software, so hopefully it's gonna be a success. In here, there's gonna be a subscribe button. Please, guys, click subscribe. We are over 500. We would love to get to 1,000 as soon as possible. That is the goal, that is the target. Obviously, we wanna go beyond that, but Click the subscribe button. We've got a playlist over here and we've got a recommended video for you guys here. Nothing else for me to say except stay safe.